Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about comparable in Java. And before we go there, let's understand why do we need comparable. The need for comparable comes from the requirement whenever you have to sort your collections. So to understand that, let's move over to the Java docs to understand how this works. So the basic idea is that you want to sort your collection and to do that Java provides you with a method called collections dot sort. You just provide you just supply your list or your collection inside the sort method and all the elements or objects inside your collection will be sorted based on the natural sorted ordering. This holds true for built in data types. But what if your list is of type student objects? Then again the same constraint applies that Java does not know how to sort student objects. It knows how to sort strings and ints and floats and doubles because those are built in data types. But student is a custom type and Java doesn't know how to sort it. And to solve that problem Java provides an interface called comparable. So comparable is the interface which you need to implement from your class whenever you have a need to sort your objects or of your class type. So this is the interface which your class needs to implement. This interface provides a single method which says compare to and it provides the foreign object and then you need to compare this foreign object with your current object. So let's go back to the Java class and understand how do we work with this comparable interface. So again I have used the student class for the sake of continuity and I have the same properties as role number name and age but this time I say implements comparable of type student. This is a generics type. We are we will be covering generics in a bit more detail in this whole in this whole series. But the basic idea is that to define that this comparable interface will only work for student types. You define the type in this particular construct, which we also call a generic type. So you do this and the moment you do this, Java will force you to provide the implementation of the compare to method, which I have provided here. So the way this uh, implementation works is you have a foreign object here, but this time this foreign object since I have defined this as of type student. So if you the moment you do this Java will ask you to override this method and using Eclipse IDE if you override this then you will get this signature automatically. Let me show you this how this works. So if you do this you will get an error here and if you click on this balloon it will say add unimplemented methods. If you double click on this you will see a compare to implementation here and this is exactly the skeleton which you see here by default it says return zero but I'll just come back to that in a while. So this is how this method came up here and once you have this signature available then you need to provide your implementation on how do you want to sort the objects. Remember you need to define your your logic here. So again I would like to sort my students based on the role number which is the natural sorting order for me for the student objects. So this is your custom sorting logic which you which you can call as natural custom logic sorting order for your student objects. So I want to sort them based on roll number but you see I've done a strange thing here. I've done a minus here. So what I'm doing is that the current objects roll number minus the foreign objects roll number. So if this value comes as a positive number then this this object is going to take priority. This is going to be sitting before the student. If this result returns in a negative value, then this object will come first and this will come second. So the student object will come first and this object, the current object will come second. And if this returns zero, then it means both of the objects deserve the same priority or the same order priority and any one of them can come after the other. So the basic idea is that if this return, if this results in greater than zero, then the current object is going to take precedence. If this is going to return in a negative value, then the foreign object which you're supplying here is going to take precedence. And if this returns in zero, then any one of them can take precedence. So you need to define your compare to logic in the compare to override implementation. Once you have done that, let's understand this with the help of an example. I've created a comparable demo class which has a public static void main method and I create an array list and I create three different student objects. First student object is named as John, second is Jane and third is Tom. The first has a roll number of three. So John has a three roll number of three. Jane has a roll number of one and Tom has a roll number of two. 
So if my compare to logic runs perfectly, then Jane should be coming first after after I sort this collection, after I add these three elements into my list. And once I sort this collection, then Jane should come first, Tom should come second, and John should come third based on my natural ordering, ordering custom logic, which I have implemented in the compare to method. And that's what I'm doing here. After I've sorted the list, I'm just printing the list by using the for each construct of the streams API. I'm just printing the name to see which one comes first and which one comes second. So let's run this program. And this is how it looks like. So Jane comes first because she had a role number one. Tom came, Tom came second because he had a role number two. And John came third because his role number was three. So no matter how many times you run this program, you are going to get the collection in the same sorted sequence. And this is happening because of the compare to implementation which you provided here. Now, if you comment this implementation, let's see what happens. And I remove this implements comparable as well from here. I just create a simple student class and now I try to run this sort. Now you see that you get an error here. And if you hover over this balloon, it says that the method sort in the type collection is not applicable to the argument array list of student. Java does not know how to sort this. So it will force you to provide a sorted implementation. And the moment you provide comparable implementation here, and if you go back to the main class, the error is gone. So this also will force you to provide your comparable implementation. Now you can use this sorting for any kind of collection sorting as well. And whenever you are doing this, always make sure to provide the compare to implementation. And remember that contract which I gave you about greater than zero, less than zero and equal. And that's all I'm going to cover in this particular session. And in the next session, we are going to talk about one more way of sorting collections, which is using comparators in Java. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you, and we'll meet again in the next session.